Johar and a very good day to you all. Today I wish to read one of my earlier books published in 2018 the archaeoastronomy of a few megalithic sites of Jharkhand. This was published by Niyogi Books. And it took about three years for me to write this book. What is so special about this book? Well, I reckon that this book is one of its kind in the country. It deals with the astronomy of a few megalithic sites in India, more precisely in the state of Jharkhand, most of which are my discoveries and all these megalithic complexes were my study sites since over two decades. Okay, so this particular book here is it. I hope you can see the book, The Archaeoastronomy of a Few Megalithic Sites of Jharkhand. Okay, and here is the back cover. And in it, there are, is a, a little, this strip comprises of my profile. And over here, this portion consists what is the book all about? The book is divided into two segments. The first segment is the essay part and the second portion deals with the five megalithic sites, five astronomical megalithic sites. Okay, so megaliths till now in India have been regarded to be associated with the dead. Either they are memorials of the dead or they are memorials of the dead. But that they could be associated with astronomy was first initiated out there in the West. Perhaps in England, when uh, uh, it was found that Stonehenge and every megalith were aligned to the uh, solstice, winter solstice sunrise. Okay, so this book too deals therefore with the astronomy. Okay, now let me begin reading a few uh, pages of this book. I hope you would like this. Although India is a treasure trove of megaliths, as is evident from the presence of these ancient monuments across the country, from Kashmir to Kerala and from Tripura to Gujarat, they have not been paid much heed by historians, archaeologists and even by the common masses as well as being significant relics of our prehistory. The surface positioning of prehistoric megalithic complexes reveal that many of these ancient monuments were consciously established employing mathematical principles. These then serve as confirmation of the fact that these ancient, unknown and unnamed people were not a lesser set of beings as is commonly assumed, but were people adept in simple mathematics and astronomy, preceding Aryan mathematicians and astronomers like Budhayan, Aryabhat, Varahamir by thousands of years. Now let us go down to another part of the book. I wish to read about the astronomical aspects 
from this particular chapter. I'm reading from the page 21 that many prehistoric megaliths in Europe were constructed with astronomical alignments has been well known for centuries. Unlike in the West, the concept of astronomical megaliths is unknown in India and hence not recognized by mainstream archaeology. The study of this dormant field of Indian megaliths, though still is in its formative, is, formative years, is now being carried out fervently by a new breed of researchers in the country. Mainstream Indian archaeology does not associate megaliths with astronomy. For archaeologists, megaliths are nothing but burials and stroke or memorials of the dead. To them, the study and investigation of the surface architecture of megaliths is unimportant as a megalith is characterized by the burial it keeps. Several stone circles or other type of megaliths that did not yield any mortuary remains are generally considered to be memorials. Nevertheless, it was F. R. Olchin, the noted archaeologist who in 1956 in India authored a pioneering paper called The Stone Alignments of Southern Hyderabad, giving reference to 40 megaliths including Nidurallu, Hanam Sagar, Bibutihalli, etc. in South, South Hyderabad region that did not yield any mortal remains but demonstrated astronomical alignments. Regarding Bibutihalli, Alchin's research showed that the stone inside the megalithic complex were astronomically aligned towards the cardinal points. In addition to being positioned in parallel lines and spaced at regular intervals, he also discovered two distinct types of alignments that he later categorized as square and diagonal alignments. The menhirs in a few of these astronomical megaliths were arranged in grids and aligned to the cardinal directions. Subsequently, Padaya observed that the stones at the Hanam Sagar site were arranged in 50 rows, with each row comprising uh, of 50 stones, that is, a total of 2,500 stones. <clears throat> Research carried out on the megaliths of Nilurallu. Murarodi, Mirardodi, and Brahmasa, Brahmagiri in Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka by scholars of the Indian Institute of Astrophysics showed that these shrines manifest astronomical links and are oriented towards the equinoctial and solstices, sunrises, and sunsets. Studies conducted by various scholars under the AGs of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research on the megaliths of Nilaskal and Bais in Karnataka have also revealed many astronomical alignments, a solstitial grid formation and a framing of solstice sunrises and sunsets. That is, by the way of the positioning of the stones in this megalithic complexes. Gordon, D.H. Gordon actually, cites Carlyle, who had acknowledged the noteworthy measurements in a druidical or Magian sense of the now demolished Deusa stone circle of Rajasthan. Several prominent megaliths such as that of those of Burjom in Kashmir and Asota in Pakistan have been found to be non-sepulchral and yielded no human remains. The megalithic complex at Asota is yet known to the locals as a sun temple, reminding us of the prehistoric megalithic temples' astronomical links. 
excavation of numerous stone circles have shown that several of these monuments are devoid of any burials. Comprehensive and meticulous studies by the author, that is of course me, and his team of a few megalithic sites in Jharkhand, such as those at Katia Murbe, Chano, Birbir, Pankri Barwadi, Furuka, etc., has revealed that astronomy and geometry had been employed in their planning and construction. A few of these astronomically built stone temples demonstrate that apart from holding the remains of the dead, these structures must also have served as observatories for the transits of the sun, moon and the stars. Perhaps this monument also functioned as calendars for the prehistoric tribal communities, all possibly in keeping with their fertility rites. Contrary to Siddhantic astronomy of Vedang, Vedanga Jyotish actually, developed much later by Aryan scholars with foundation in calculations of the transits and the motions of the planets, the sun and other stellar bodies, pre or non-Aryan tribal astronomy was based on observations of the transits and the positions of the sun, moon and the stars. This approach is better known as observational or horizon astronomy. Thus, megalithic astronomers position their observatories fortified with their understanding of such observational astronomy. The orientation of megalithic temples towards cardinal points and equinoctial and solstices, sunrises and sunsets perhaps allowed the ancients to make use of this date to conduct the various fertility festivals and rites. Orientation of the megalithic complexes of Bai and Singhani and of a few stones of the Chano, Katia, Murbe and Pankrivarwadi megalithic complexes towards the midsummer sunrise was perhaps done to mark the day that augmented the fertility of both the tribes' women folk and their farming land. Such orientation of megalithic burials towards the summer solstice sunrise may also have been done for the interred to receive blessings from the fertility goddesses. Several megaliths in and around Hazari Park and in the state of Jharkhand have been found to be aligned to the winter solstice sunrise. The reason behind this cannot be firmly ascertained. Nonetheless, my deliberation points to the Jantapa type bone bearing tribal rituals, also referred as the Jangadiya, that were once held on or around the winter solstice sunrise. After burying the bones of the dead on the aforementioned day, a menhir being, uh, sorry, a menhir facing the mid winter sunrise was planted at the spot where the cinerary pot was buried. That would be all. This particular book is available in all the major bookstores of the country and even online. I hope my reading has kept you interested in the book. And if you read it, you will find Another aspect of India's unknown history that is now lost with time but still exists in the form of megaliths. Thank you.